Hi, I'm Nico and welcome to my channel. If you're familiar with any of my videos, then you'll know that I love food. I mean, really love food, which is why it's featured in pretty much all of my videos. always love food, but moving to China has really brought it out of me. And that's because I'm not alone here. Everyone in China loves food. It's such an important part of life here. No matter where you go, you'll find someone cooking, selling, people eating together. The smell of food is just constantly in the air. My previous experience of Chinese food was back in the UK, in my local Chinese takeaway or restaurant. And whilst the food was fine, it did in no way, shape or form prepare me for what to actually expect here in China. If you haven't been to China, then you are missing out. There are so many dishes, ingredients, flavors that I've just never come across before. And while some of them I'm not so keen on, controversially, Szechuan pepper. Some I absolutely love, and I thought I would share with you some of my favorites in this video. So, let's start at the beginning. The beginning of the day, of course. Arguably the most important meal of the day, breakfast time. Breakfast time in China is an important affair. Little shops, stands and kiosks pop up in the middle of the street, often just for this time of day, selling their signature dish to the hundreds of hungry people on their way to work. Whilst there are so many amazing things you can have for breakfast here, one thing reigns supreme in my eyes, and that is the jam bing. The jam bing is believed to have come from Shandong province many moons ago, but most people associate it with the city of Tianjin. Whilst you can find jam bing stands all over China, its presence is all the more popular up here in the north. If you don't know what a jam bing is, then let me tell you. They make it on this hot skillet, which is specifically made for making jam bing. It's kind of like a crepe or a pancake. And what they do is they crack an egg on it, They put this special sauce. They add this big dough cracker, some spring onions and extra things, depending on the vendor. Oh, then they wrap it up into this little parcel of goodness and it's just, it's so good. For me, the jam bing is the perfect breakfast food. It's filling, it's got loads of flavor and also that dough cracker in the middle just really sets it off and adds this extra texture. Whilst I do like to wash my breakfast down with a coffee, later on in the day, I do like to partake in one of China's most popular drinks, bubble tea. Invented in the 1980s in Taiwan, this drink is very much still a part of today's culture. You can find bubble tea shops all over, but before I came to China, I had never even heard of it. Yet, it's quickly become my favorite afternoon pick-me-up. Hi. 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 I like the brown sugar milk tea the best. At the bottom of the drink are these chewy tapioca pearls, which I just love. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself and I skip lunch, which obviously I would never do. For lunch, I could eat noodles all day, every day. I love noodles. And you can get so many different types here. Long, short, thick, thin, wet, dry, hot, cold. There is such a variety of different shapes and sizes and flavors. I can't pick a favorite because I love all noodles in different ways, but let me share with you some of my favorites.
Another thing that I just love to have for lunch is malatang. Malatang is like your own personal hot pot. What you do is you go to this buffet and you pick all the vegetables, noodles, meat that your heart desires, and then they make it into your own personal soup. You can customize it however you like, and then finally you eat it by dipping it into this sesame paste, which is like my favorite part of malatang. I especially like to eat it in winter because it really warms your body up. Like I just mentioned, it's very similar to hot pot. And whilst I enjoy hot pot, it's not one of my favorite foods here in China. I more like the idea of hot pot. I like the social aspect that you get to go out with friends and enjoy dinner and drinks and be around this big hot pot and enjoy it together. It's more of an occasion for me, but it's also quite time consuming and can be a little bit buffy. Whereas malatang, I can enjoy every day. One thing that I thought I would eat pretty much every day, and as it turns out, I'm very rarely eaten here in China, as it's just really more of a special occasion food, is the infamous Peking or Beijing duck. Now, I'd had this before I came to China, but having it in Beijing in a restaurant is just like a whole new level of tasty. This is one of my favorite places to have it, Jingsun. It's super tasty, and so is the price. If we're going somewhere for a special occasion, then we'll head to Sijimin Fu, which is also known as Peking Chamber because their condiment game is on point. I've not been to Dadong yet, I'm still waiting for someone to treat me, but that's Beijing's most famous and more expensive duck restaurant. You get a pancake, you pick up some duck, you dip it in the hoisin sauce, put it on your pancake. I'm gonna get some skin because I like mine a little bit textured. And then you put the greens in it as well. You can wrap it up like a little baby and give it a bite. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'm so ladylike as well. Oh, it's so good. I love, love, love this. After a more relaxed meal, then barbecue or chuan is the way to go. Moving to China has opened up my eyes to all the amazing things you can put on the barbecue. Summer nights, drinking beer and eating barbecue reminds me of being back in the UK. On the rare occasion we'd get a sunny day and everyone would get their barbecue out. It's got this really fun, relaxed vibe and after a week of working, it's the perfect thing to end on. The spices and flavors that you often find in the barbecue food here, you also find in Xinjiang food, which is another one of my favorites. It's hard to pick just one dish from this cuisine because to be honest, everything that I've tried, I've enjoyed. If it's got naan bread in, then to me, it's a winner. In most Chinese restaurants, you will find loads of different dishes. And there's vegetables here that I didn't even know existed. We don't eat that much meat, but we always order loads of veggie options. Honestly, I didn't realize that cauliflower could taste so good. No offense to my mum, but the flavorless boiled stuff that she usually puts on my Sunday dinner, you just wouldn't even think it was the same vegetable. I also never liked mushrooms at all. And coming here to China, their mushroom game is on point. I pretty much have them for every meal now. So before I leave you and go to order some food, there is one more thing that I just can't miss out. But where does it fit in? Breakfast? Lunch? Dinner? Midnight snack? Actually, all of the above. The humble jiaozi. Now, I've always loved dumplings with their various flavors and textures. And here in China, they're just on another level. You can find some good and obviously some bad, but no matter where you go, you'll find them. I love my locals' traditional dumplings. They're just so soft, they just melt in your mouth. I hope 
hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry for making you hungry. I'm going to go and order some food now as well. I just love how the food here in China varies from region to region and as we travel more, my favorites might also change. So maybe in a year or so, I'll have to do an updated video. I hope you like this video and if you do, then don't forget to subscribe to my Patreon to see some more in-depth food videos that'll make your mouth water. I'll see you next time.